Hello viewers, this is the lecture series of fermentation techniques. In previous lecture, we discussed about fermentation. After that, we discussed what is industrial fermentation. Then we also discussed about the production of ethanol and citric acid by fermentation technique. In this lecture, today we will discuss about the production of antibiotics by fermentation process. The antibiotics are penicillin. After that, we will discuss the production of cephalosporin and streptomycin and we will also discuss about genetically modified microorganisms. Now, let us discuss about antibiotics. What are antibiotics? These are the molecules that kills or stop the growth of microorganisms and these are produced by the microorganisms only. They also kill bacteria and fungi. The first antibiotic was discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928 from a filamentous fungus. Its name was Penicillium notatum. During the World War II, penicillin was made by the fungus Penicillium notatum. But today, it is made by using a different species that is Penicillium chrysogenum and it is for better yield and there is still a constant search to improve the yield. Penicillin was the first important commercial product which is produced by an aerobic submerged fermentation. Do you know there are 10,000 different antibiotics known but only about 200 in commercial use. Since most new antibiotics are no better than existing ones, there is still a constant search for new antibiotics and antibiotics are the most prescribed drugs and it has a big bigness and finding a new antibiotic and getting it into the market, it is a very long process. It take more than 15 years. The antibiotics are produced on an industrial scale by using a variety of fungi and bacteria and penicillin is fermented in a batch culture which is produced by the fungus penicillium chrysogenum which requires lactose and other sugars and a source of nitrogen that is yeast tract in the medium to grow well. As you can see here in this slide, these are the organisms which are producing these antibiotics which is important antibiotic as you can see here. Some are food flavoring agents. Let us start with chloramphenicol. It is an antibiotic which is produced by an, an organism Bacillus subtilis which is a bacterium and streptomyces venezuli. It is also produced chloramphenicol which is used as an antibiotic. As in previous lecture, we discussed about citric acid and Aspergillus niger is a microbe which is a fungus which is producing citric acid and it is various use in food flavoring agent. Streptomyces gracis, it is used for producing streptomycin in large scale which is very important antibiotic and many more you can see here like Ashbia gossipi which is a fungus and it is producing riboflavin which is vitamin B2 which it has very important application. As bacterium Escheria coli it produce lactase its use is as digestive aid. So, as you can see here that microbes are very much important they are producing many important products we are using them as antibiotic in food flavoring and for vitamin production and as digestive aid. Let us start with the production of penicillin. As you can see, this is the chemical structure of penicillin antibiotic. The production of penicillin, it takes place by two process. First one is upstream processing and second one is downstream processing. The upstream processing encompasses any technology that leads to the synthesis of a product and upstream includes the exploration, developmental and production part while the extraction and the purification of a biotechnological product from fermentation is referred to as downstream process. 
in downstream processing the products in a fermenter are as you know those are impure and dilute so it need to be purified so it is done by downstream processing this usually involves filtration to separate the microbial cells from the liquid medium and which is followed by chemical purification and concentration of the final product as the product needs to be very pure so it is dissolved and then precipitated as sodium salt potassium salt or to separate them from other substances in the medium let's discuss the steps of production of penicillin by fermentation process the fermentation process requires the culture the microbe and the raw material so in this process the raw materials are corn steep liquor which is a major carbon source and yeast extract we take for nitrogen source and some nutrients are added to the fermenter and the mold mycelium is filtered from the harvested product and after 40 hours penicillin begins to be secreted by the fungus and penicillin is in next step it is extracted from the organic solvent that we take butyl acetate in which it is dissolved and finally we precipitate the product it is washed filtered and dried for the final product so we get the penicillin g which is butyl penicillic acid you can also understand the production of penicillin by fermentation process from here only this is a fermenter as you can see here there are some outlets and some inlets first let's describe the inlets first one is for supplement of acid base this is the inlet this is nutrient inlet and sterile air in for the speed up of microorganisms action as you can see here and this is cooling water cooling panel for maintaining the temperature as the microbe require the optimum temperature and optimum ph so the monitoring of ph and temperature is very much important so as you can see here this is temperature monitor and this is ph monitor as the raw material and culture mix here in fermenter and there is stirrer these are pedals they mix it and some gases goes from here and the final product antibiotic comes out from this outlet so this is a fermenter so it's a method by which we can produce penicillin by fermentation process you can also see the production of penicillin in this slide the same material as i told you the medium we are taking carbon rich source sugars corn steep lactose yeast extract ph buffers minerals and we are also adding starter culture which is very much important it's a fungus which which produce the penicillin then we add these two in batch fermenter which we studied in previous slide and 10 times in 6 day we have to remove 30% culture and we have to add 30% fresh medium in 10 times in 6 days and the next step is rotating filter as you can see here the fungal cells we separate it out and it is directly given to the livestock feed because those are very much rich in nutrients on the second hand you can see we take the filtrate which is very rich with antibiotics and we dissolve it in butyl acetate and the precipitation process we add potassium ions to precipitate the salt of penicillin after that we do the cleaning process filtration wash drying and we get 99.5% pure penicillin g right and after that we can also get more product like chemically and enzymatically modified penicillin from this penicillin g because this is butyl penicillinic acid so the resulting penicillin it can be chemically and enzymatically modified to make a variety of penicillin with slightly different properties 
The group of penicillin include more than 20 antibiotics which are divided into several categories. As there is a category that is natural penicillin, it include penicillin G, procaine, penicillin G, penicillin V and benzathione. So, sir, there is so much variety of penicillin. So, let us discuss what are the factors, how can we improve the yield of penicillin. So, there, we, there are some instruction we can also improve it by adding something. So, first one is that by improvement can be done by improving the medium content. Right? And second one is that the isolation of better penicillin by producing mold that is penicillium chrysogenium which grow better in huge deep fermentation tank. So, we can take a huge deep fermentation tank for improving the yield and the development of submerged culture technique for cultivation of mold in large volume of liquid medium through which sterile air is forced. As you saw in that fermenter we were adding sterile air which improve the air the which improve the yield of penicillin because they speed up the growth of microorganism. Now, let us discuss the production of chloramphenicol now which is known as cephalosporin its production by fermentation technique. As you can see here this is the chemical structure of cephalosporin which is a beta lactam antibiotic. The cephalosporin is a broad spectrum antibiotic, it is beta lactam antibiotic and it is closely related to the penicillin. As they inhibit the cell wall synthesis, both of them they inhibit the cell wall synthesis of other microbes and the cephalosporin was generated from fungus cephalosporium acrimonium right and it is used in surgical procedures. It is also used to reduce the risk of post operative infections. It is also possible to convert the penicillin V or benzyl penicillin to a cephalosporin because both are same because they have beta lactam ring. It can be done by chemical ring expansion like cephalaexican be made by this way and most cephalosporins used in clinical practice are semi synthetics products. Those are produced from the fermentation product of cephalosporin C. Cephalosporin C was first isolated in 1952. It is made as the fermentation product of cephalosporium acrimonium which is most commonly found in soil, in rotting mushroom and in plant debris also. Now, let us discuss the production of cephalosporin. The methods of production by fermentation technique, it is similar to penicillin. In this production of cephalosporin, we use glucose, ammonium chloride, methyl oleate, metallic salts and little amount of cephalosporin C we get from this medium and the production of cephalosporin C was induced by methionine which caused the necessary thickening of the mycelium and raised cephalosporin C production to about 4 gram per liter. So, it increased the yield. The fermentation is advantageously carried out at a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade and the optimum temperature is 5 to 8 and it takes 1 to 20 days. The product is extracted from the culture fluid by absorption on carbon or resins rather than by solvent. As you can see here in this slide, this is showing the production of cephalosporin by fermentation technique. So, antibiotic producing organism we take here that is a fungus cephalosporium we take here the species. and a culture is started by placing the sample of organism into a shake flask with growth promoting nutrients which we call the inocul inoculum preparation. We do it here only the culture preparation and the seed tank is equipped with the mixture to keep the growth medium active and a pump to deliver the sterilized air. So, we are adding the mixture and the culture here the microbe and the starting raw material here and we mix it in a 
fermentation tank. The production of antibiotics takes place here only and during fermentation the microbes continue to grow and they excrete large quantities of the antibiotic. So, we provide them uh, optimum pH and optimum temperature for their growth. So, this is the slide which is showing the production of cephalosporin by the fermentation technique. Now, we will discuss about the uses of chloromycetine or chloramphenicol and chloramphenicol which is a beta lactam and Antibiotic, it is used in the treatment of infections which is caused by bacteria. It works by killing bacteria or preventing their growth. It is used to treat serious infections in different parts of the body. It is sometimes begin with other antibiotics, sometimes we make the formulation, the mixtures, it is given with other antibiotics also and however, chloramphenicol should not be used for colds flu and other virus infections. As you know that antibiotics only attack the microbes, the bacteria, the fungus not the virus, Vi antiviral drugs are different. So, it is not used for cold, flu and virus uh, infections, sore throat and other minor infections or to prevent the infections. There is another drug which is known as chloromycetine. It is used for eye dropping, it is used as an eye ointment, it contain the active ingredient chloramphenicol. It is a type of medicine as you know it is an antibiotic, it kills the bacteria. Now, we will discuss about another antibiotic that is streptomycin. This is the chemical structure of streptomycin as you can see it is quite complicated this is streptomycin antibiotic. It is an antibiotic and it is first of class of drugs called aminoglycosides. It is different from penicillin and cephalosporin because this is aminoglycoside and it was the first which cured tuberculosis which is very dangerous disease. It is derived from actinobacterium soil bacteria and its name is streptomyces griseus and the, it is active against both gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria. Now, let us discuss about the production of streptomycin by fermentation technique. It is originally isolated in 1947 by Albert Schrez who was a graduate student working in Selman A. Wexman laboratory. Streptomycin act by inhibiting protein synthesis and it damaged the cell membrane in suspectical microorganisms. It directly attacked the protein synthesis and it damaged the cell membrane of the infectious bacteria or fungus. Its side effects include injury to the kidneys and nerve damage that can result in dizziness and deafness also. So, in the fermentation process the spores of streptomyces griseus are inoculated into a medium to establish a culture with a high mycelial biomass for introduction into an inoculum tank. Then the culture medium for the production of streptomycin contain soya bean meal which is a rich source of nitrogen, glucose which is a source of carbon and some sodium chloride also. We use some part of sodium chloride here also some percentage also and the optimum temperature for the fermentation is 28 degree centigrade. The optimum pH is 7.6 to 8.0 and to achieve maximum production of streptomycin high rates of aeration is required and agitation are required for 10 days then the yield succeed to 1 gram per liter. There is a classical method for searching antibiotics that is the agar plug method. Let us discuss about this method. It is particularly useful when the test organisms grow poorly in the medium of the growth. 
it is of the isolates such as fungi. Plugs about 0.5 centimeter in diameter and it is made with a sterile cork borer at progressive distances from the fungus. These plugs are then placed on plates with pure culture or different organism. This method may be used with actinomycetes for searching new antibiotics. Let us discuss about the slight culture preparation. In first step by using a sharp knife, a sterile sharp knife, we have to cut 1.5 to 1.5 centimeter blocks of the adequate plate medium and then place it onto the previously sterilized glass slide. In next step, we have to inoculate the margin of the agar blocks with a loop full of microorganism. In next step, then we have to place a sterile cover slip onto their surface. After that, we have to place a smoosh cotton swab into the petri dish next to the slide. As you can see here, this is cotton swab and it form a small humidity chamber and after the incubation, slide cultures can be studied direct under the microscope. So, this is a way by which we can prepare slide culture preparation. Now, let us discuss how can we do the isolation of single colony of bacteria. It is necessary to separate individual bacterial cell from one another on an agar surface in order to produce a pure colonies. A colony of bacteria is made up of millions of identical bacterial cells and each originating from one cell only. And we should streak gently across the agar surface to avoid tearing the agar. If the cells are embedded in the agar, it will not be possible to spread them out. So, by this way we can just we can just take out the single colony of bacteria. There are also some methods uh, let us discuss about the isolation of antibiotic producing fungi. There is a convenient and efficient method. It was established for isolating antifungal antibiotics, which is produced by fungi from soil sample. In this method, soil samples were diluted and directly plated in agar medium by the standard fungi isolating method and the plates were cultured at 27 degree centigrade for 2 to 3 days to permit the growth of fungal colonies. We provide some days to develop that is 2 to 3 days and the temperature we maintain that is 27 degree centigrade. As we have taken the suspension of pathogenic candida albicans in saline and it was overlaid by spraying on the plates under controlled condition in the safety cabinet. And after one day incubation, the fungal colony is showing an antagonistic effect and with the inhibition zone again sprayed C albicans were selected. And among 151 isolates, 26 strains were found to reproduce anti C albicans activity in the liquid medium. And the yield is the higher selection rate, we get 17.2 percent. Then 3.1 percent which we get from the traditional method. So, this new method can be applied for isolation of microbes such as fungi and actinomycetes that produce antibiotics effective against pathogenic microbes. The mold is strained out of the fermentation broth and then the antibiotics is removed from the broth by filtration, precipitation and other separation method. As you saw in previous slides that how much microbes are useful for us. They are producing many antibiotics, many food products. Let us discuss how can we get more. Let us discuss about genetically engineered organism. A genetically modified organisms, it is an organism whose genetic material has been altered by using the genetic engineering technique. So, GMO it includes microorganism in bacteria, yeast, insects, plants, fishes and mammals. 
GMOs are the source of genetically modified foods, they are doing very good in food industry and they are also widely used in scientific research and to produce goods other than food. The GMOs uh, are used to produce the protein insulin and it is very important product which is used to treat the diabetes. We are using GMOs for producing biofuels, biofuels are the renewable source of energy in which we discussed in previous slide we discussed about the production of ethanol. So, we were producing ethanol which is used as a biofuel and it is also used for clotting factor. It also clot the blood and it is used to treat hemophilia. It is also helping in human growth hormone to treat various forms of dwarfism. A very important bacteria like lactobacillus, lactococcus, uh, these have been used to improve the flavor, the texture and preservation and nutritive value of dairy. As well as we are using these GMOs as well as in vegetables, cereals and legume fermentation products which include yogurt, buttermilk, cheese, pickled vegetables, idli and many more. And do you know some of even used? as probiotics. Probiotics contribute to the overall health of the user. In milk, the lactic acid bacteria ferment lactose and other sugars and some proteases play role in the process along with the sugar metabolizing enzymes. Now, let us discuss how these, how much these genetically engineered organisms are important. As we discussed in previous slides, so, uh, there is a slide as you can see here, these are the organisms which are manufactured by genetically engineering method and the product they are forming and how much their application. So, let us start with this Escheria coli which is a genetically modified organism and it produces human insulin which is very much important for diabetic person. Ishira coli it is also very much useful because it produces bovine growth hormone which increase the milk production in cows. It is very much helpful and Ishira coli it also produces hormone growth, human hormone growth which is important for sorting out the growth deficiencies. It is also producing some tumor macrosis factor. This factor dissolves tumor cells and some mammalian cell culture which is prepared by genetically engineering and it produce monoclonal antibodies. These are very much important they also help in milk production. Mammalian cell culture it produce TPA which is very much important because they clot the blood which is very much important point. So, these are the applications of organisms and when we added genetically engineering in it, we are getting more application from the microbes. So, uh, in this lecture, we discussed about the production of penicillin and cephalosporin and streptomycin. After that, we discuss how microorganisms we are preparing from genetically engineering method and how much applicable, how much those are useful for us. In the next lecture, we will discuss about the vitamins and amino acid production by fermentation method. Mm -hmm.